Hello, everyone, giving everyone a chance to come on in the room. Hello everyone, Anthony Williams here, Korg Specialist and Korg Artist. Just want to say hello to you, good afternoon. Hey, we're going to get this done today. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today. Anthony Williams, Korg artist and uh, Korg uh, specialist here. Just want to take some time to uh, just hang out with you this afternoon. Uh, today is uh, the day we go over the Korg Grand Stage. First of all, let me thank everyone once again for uh, your patience. We're just doing the best we can here in you know, this COVID scenario, making technology work for us. But I'm glad that we're able to connect in this capacity. Um, and thank you to Korg for my family for, for uh, you know, considering me for this and to connect with you all and just kind of give you a little bit of background of um, how Korg has impacted me over the years uh, in playing and, you know, touring and working in a professional setting. Uh, and for me, um, Korg has definitely been the core of my sound. Uh, the Grand Stage being one of the latest additions the past couple of years. Every time something new comes out, I just have to you know, put my hands on it and, and see how I can incorporate it. And, you know, if you haven't seen my rig before, go and follow me on IG, um, AKW Music, that is. And you can kind of see some of the variations of uh, the rig that I have um, uh, that I've used over the years with Korg. And uh, so today, hopefully, uh, for those that are Grand Stage users, uh, some of this uh, might be uh, information for you already. For those of you that are not uh, Grand Stage users or Korg user at all, users at all, I just want to welcome you and thank you for joining. And hopefully we can help you find your sound, help you find something that's going to fit for you. If you're looking for that next piece of, piece of gear uh, to, to go in your studio, uh, to go in your church, to go in your uh, rehearsal space or whatever it is that you have, um, the best thing to do is to... Uh, you know, tune in and we'll see what we got going on here. So we'll get going here. 
Okay, hopefully this, uh, you can hear me well. So, um, oftentimes we have people uh, not really knowing what the difference is between uh, a stage piano and a, a workstation. Uh, and for me, um, I hate seeing people buy the wrong gear, uh, you know, and, and sometimes I, I go into houses of worship and they might not have really, um, you know, they don't really tap in. How many guys have seen that where you don't really, they're, they're not tapping into all the potential uh, that this particular unit offers, okay? Um, and it's like, okay, well, it's a workstation. So um, oftentimes people go and they'll just pay, uh, play one sound. They'll just play a piano or pay, play a rose or a string and a pad, and that's it. And uh, not using uh, the workstation. So just to give you uh, uh, the, dis the distinction between one is, um, uh, you know, 32 tracks on the chronos, 16 tracks of audio, 16 tracks of MIDI. So which means the audio you can use to come into the unit and then the MIDI is what's uh, inside of the sound. So let me do this. Uh, I typically uh, open up with. Um, I typically open up here with just a little music. So um, I'm just gonna play a little bit here and kind of go through a couple of the grand stage sounds that I love here.
All right. I uh, just wanted to play a little bit with the uh, with the grand stage. For those that you that know me, if you don't, I I just love uh, playing these instruments. I'm I'm so inspired by them when I sit down and play, and I, and I just wanted to uh, just kind of uh, uh, play a little bit from my heart. And you know, times are just you know I just I just want to take this opportunity to just kind of address that. And I know us in the music community, uh, I, I feel such a great charge at the moment uh, to be able to touch people's lives with everything that's going on all the violence, all, all the famine, all the fear, all of the um, things that are happening right before our eyes. Some of, us, some of us are experiencing it in different capacities. And for me, the way I cope is with music. Music heals. It brings people together. That's why I chose this unit because uh, that's why I chose Korg is because that's where I found my sound, and that's where that helps me to be peaceful when I sit down and, you know, go and, and, and play behind my instrument and, and go to serve others in, 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 the community that I, in the communities that I go to play, even around the world. Music is universal. I've been blessed to travel all across the globe, and one of my favorite festivals is uh, uh, the Umbria Jazz Fest. I'm in my home studio, so you can see some of my badges behind me and stuff like that from traveling, but, you know, to be able to pierce people's hearts through music, and we might not speak the same language, but these sounds and these instruments are so articulate that, you know, I've had people just come up to me after a service or a concert and say they really enjoy my playing, and I could not do that without the team that helps to build these instruments. So, you know, uh, hopefully, you know, those of you that are out there, I hope you have an opportunity to, you know, uh, continue to use our, our playing as, as, as love, and, and, you know, thank you so much for those out there uh, that that are tuning in once again. I'm Anthony Williams here with Korg, uh, Korg artists here and and, and specialists. So um, I, I opened up a little bit, you know. I just kind of with with playing, and I'll be going through some of the sounds here. Um, and here, uh, the the grand stage uh, is a derivative of the Kronos. So uh, the Kronos is Korg's flagship audio workstation, as I mentioned before, with 16 tracks of audio, 16 tracks of MIDI, and uh, right here. Uh, is the heart of that unit minus all of the other production equipment uh, as far as the uh, sampling and sequencing is concerned. So this particular model of keyboard was so painstakingly done. I had an opportunity to go to Japan and um, and and meet with the uh, designers and the sound, the, the engineers, and uh, before this unit came out and played it, and I'm just always at awe how they take it to the next level. Uh, so it was very meticulously put together, and all the pianos are to, like to fine detail. I believe there's six models of this particular uh, of the pianos inside of here, and so let me go over as well the uh, the models that are available. So. The, the, the Grand Stage comes in two forms. It comes in the uh, form of 73 keys. So I'm actually playing on the um, 88 weighted. And um, I'm seeing, I, I'm looking at two devices here. So I'm trying to field your questions as well. I do have some of my core uh, team members and family on here that if you have any questions, I think they'll be able to jump in and uh, kind of answer some of those. And I'll try to answer uh, some of these as I see them in between. So as far as pricing, um, I see that Korg is answering that as well. My family there is answering about the pricing. Uh, but right now, uh, I'm on the 73 key model. Comes in 73 and 88. Both of these are weighted models, okay? So uh, sometimes some companies, they, they'll kind of to scale it down and make it a little bit more portable. They'll take away some of the weight uh, and things of that nature and uh, uh, and just kind of scale back in the key bed and things and all of that you're you're not gonna miss out on uh, that unit if you wanted something a little bit smaller and they're also an 88 weighted as well so the 73 and 88 73 is I believe 37 pounds and 44 pounds for the 88 key version okay so they both actually share the same key bed that's from the the key bed is actually um, the uh, uh, RH3 key bed, which is a Japanese award-winning key bed. Uh, Korg has been doing a phenomenal job uh, with this particular instrument. And instrument over the years, they have developed, uh, and this key this key bed has been in uh, some of their other digital pianos, like the C1, 
uh, the, the air model pianos, and also the Kronos. So if you're a Kronos user looking for a secondary unit to take out when you don't necessarily want to take your Kronos out on the road or to church or, or on a gig or whatever, you know, the, the Grand Stage you're not going to miss because the Grand Stage actually has that same playability. So it's kind of modeled after like a regular piano with the four sections or whatever to where you have uh, where it's lower uh, level there will have uh, about it's going to be heavy. It's going to be heavier on the bottom uh, and then going up to the top range where it's going to be a little bit more weight, uh, 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 less in weight. It's going to be lighter at the top and heavier at the bottom. So your acoustic piano players that are, you know, really tr uh, used to that, you know, that's going to give you a, a, a very, a very uh, seamless integration and getting into a digital piano. So uh, right now, um, I'm going to go over kind of the, the sound engine. So the sound engine is so powerful. Why? Because it's a derivative of the same ones that you're going to find inside of the Kronos. Okay. For those of you coming in, I'm just going to address you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Anthony Williams here, core artist, doing an overview here on the grand stage. So um, seven powerful sound engines here. You have the SGX2. I'm just going to do an overview. And then I'm going to try to play a little bit of some of these uh, sounds. Uh, so, uh, and then after I talk about the sound engines, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, interface here and, and use your time, uh, you know, be mindful of your time here for tuning in. So seven engines, the SGX2, EP1, CX3, Vox, Compact, AL1, and HD1. I'll explain what those are here in a moment. So uh, as a player, um, let me just go over the, the interface, okay? So this is such a, a, a simplistic, very intuitive uh, user interface here. Uh, even on the Kronos and some other keyboards, um, like, uh, I mean, it, it doesn't mind. I'm going to pick it up because I've got this with me here now. i am just got tons of Cork products around, but I'm holding up here the monolog. So, of course, this being, uh, you know, uh, uh, analog synth, and it's going to have a lot of, you know, knobs and, you know, things for programming. Uh, that are going to be available. I mean, this probably has more buttons. I know this has more buttons and knobs than what the Grand Stage has. So just to kind of show you the simplicity uh, and, and difference of what you're going to find. I mean, of course, like I said, this is for sound design and, you know, making your sounds on the fly and things of that nature, which you can kind of do here uh, as well. So, like, it's the, 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 the board is less uh, uh, intricate than what that is. I'm going to start to the left here. The left is just the pitch being a modulation wheel. Then, then next you have the master volume and you have the S1 and S2 um, button there. If you're joining me, let me know that you're, hopefully you're enjoying this. Let me see those hearts and likes, share this, and hopefully uh, we can, you know, help to spread some, some uh, information here with you guys here. So um, there's the master, vo master volume, SW1, SW2. Then there is a dynamic button. You have the dynamic uh wheel there and then there is the eq so with the equalizer um it's just three band with the low mid and high then i have ensemble the ensemble here uh has the um basically eight different banks to choose your sounds from from those are the ensemble are your grouped sounds that you typically that you're going to use the layer then in the middle section is my favorite so i have a through h and then from the a through h i'm actually going to have uh, the one through uh, eight from eight each bank. So on bank A, I have eight sounds that I can choose from. I just have a button one through eight. I can choose which ones are there. B, same thing, all the way through H. They are uh, right on top of each other. You have your alphabet at the top, A through H, and at the bottom, one through eight. Then your keyboard sound, which is your main sound section, your number one, uh, your, your main layer sound before being layered. Um, and they both have a screen to identify quickly what sound that you're on. So you don't have to do, I mean, I know the Kronos has a big uh, touch screen. Uh, it's, I believe, seven inches or so, and uh, that serves the you know, purpose that it needs to serve. But, you know, you don't, uh, it's, you're going to have to have a lot more uh, going on on that screen because, like I said, mind you, again, that 16 channels of audio and MIDI, if you're in a sequencer that you're going to be bouncing from on the stage piano, uh, you don't need, you know, all of that stuff. So you can see uh, right now, so you've got the keyboard section. The level knob on each section, so on the ensemble side and on the um, keyboard side, it's actually in what I'm showing here in this picture, if you can see on the screen, that's where the EQ section is, 
um, and showing uh, where the dynamic button is. Um, here's another section that kind of shows the buttons side by side um, where it's going to have um, the showing you the ensemble and keyboard section and how those have the rotary knobs there. Uh, and then next is the reverb. So reverb slash delay section where all your multi effects are. And there's about eight different uh, versions of that, including a time and tap tempo button, uh, which will also allow you to kind of incur the depth that you want as well. Panel lock so that if you're making any edits, uh, if you're playing at any edits that you made or, you know, you want to stay on the same sound so that way you're not slipping up and accidentally, uh, you know, taking that sound off of there, um, that locks that. A system button. And then uh, so um, and let me talk about the finish as well. I know I've heard over the years, sometimes people are very leery about what to put in their church I mean, because they, they were so used to having a, a grand piano, uh, you know, and, and the colors of it, the look of it. I mean, this finish is, is if you can see, it's a very beautiful unit. I've, I've had it on stage, had it in church, have it in the studio, and I'm not ashamed to have this unit out. I mean, it's, it's got uh, on the panel like a piano black um, with inside the divots of the piano. Um, it's very sleek and slim, and it also has kind of like um, a wood grain looking, a lighter gray matte black type style uh, finish on the top uh, where I'm rubbing my hand here. So let me go through this as well. Um, one thing that's really cool about this is that as players, oftentimes we really don't have all of the, you know, the cute stuff that um, guitar players have. I mean, they have amazing I'm, I'm i'm in my studio i'm a bass player as well so i've got a couple of my basses hanging on the wall over here got a couple of you know beautiful instruments uh drum kits are you know phenomenal i've got some kicks kits stacked up over here with a nice sparkle kit i've got a couple of kits here and my dad he's a guitar player um i'm from the bobby jones gospel television show and uh my dad has one of his guitars is a green strat okay so this strat actually lights up his pick guard lights up green and I'm like man like that's killer all the guys I remember when we first took it to the set everybody was like oh my gosh so the cameras automatically zoomed in on him with that with that strat so you get that playing out you know all your cool your guitar friends and your uh, 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 your drummer friends and stuff like that in the band your bandmates uh, your teammates you know uh, they they have uh, you know they have the cool instruments but this if you turn your attention here to the Korg logo One thing that I love. So here is I'm going to edit this now. So I'm kind of I, I turned the color off. So this is like um, a, a really really cool um, uh, display here. I was like probably a few months ago playing with my King Korg. I usually have a King Korg as well with me. Last week on the IG live stream, I used the King Korg a lot, and I didn't even realize that it had a light LED on the back of it. This has a full LED uh, backlit uh, unit here. Uh, right now it's off. And it, it gets gets very bright, okay? Gets very bright. So now you can actually even change the color. This is what I was getting at because I was so excited about it. But start off with white, red, pink, blue, green, purple, gold. And now I've got it on cycle, okay? So that's just going to kind of rotate through all of the uh, different colors that are there. And especially now, even with, you know, houses of worship or uh, your band, uh, if you have uh, uh, your, your band, if you if you have like a, a, a light show behind you, uh, you can kind of pick this. Uh, you can kind of pick a color that will coincide with what you um, with with what's going on behind you. And check this out here. Um, the um, on so the velocity. You can see while I'm playing this that the light is actually going to the beat. I love that. I had a guy in the service one time come up to me like, man, I really 
enjoyed myself and enjoyed your playing, but that keyboard, like that's that's really really cool. So I got fancy one time and put put it to the color of uh, the lights that was behind me. So I I, I really love that uh, love that feature. And if you have any questions, I'll tell you right. Let me see if I could do this right now. Um, and I might be a little bit behind, uh, but if you have any questions, um, I'll take um, a couple of minutes to try to answer any questions if you have for me as we go along here. Um, about the grand stage and uh, any, you know, tips or tricks that you might have any questions about. Um, I'm, I'm glad to uh, a uh, answer those for you. Um, and I see that they have been on it as well, answering some of the questions here. So, so far we've been over uh, some of the key features with the RH3 key bid, comes in 73 and 88 weighted. So now I'm going to get into uh, some of the um, aspects of the piano. So there's six acoustic pianos in here. OK, and if I catch a question, I'll come back to it. Um, there there are six acoustic pianos like very, very dynamically designed. This sound team uh, and the sound design team and, and the technicians that come up with this stuff are amazing. And I'm just telling you from more of a player's aspect. So, you know, I'm I, you know, I don't I don't want to get into a lot of the um, technical features of how many you know, uh, 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 sample rates and this bit depth and it was this and the and the mic was at this particular placement and we ran it through. This. I, I just want to give you a practical uh, um, mindset of the of the musician because we're not thinking about that stuff when we're playing it. We want to know that it sounds good. You know, we we when we sit behind it, we want to make sure that you know we we. I know for me, I'm inspired by what I feel when I play and hear sound, and it's all because of how. Uh, they came up with these particular uh, settings. So these pianos are uh, from some of the most top, uh, uh, I know, uh, uh, most sought after places uh, that, that are very popular for piano from Berlin Grands, uh, Heidel Heidelberg, Austria, uh, Japan, and as well as a newly sampled Italian Grand piano. So the Italian Grand is, is very, uh, very, <laughs> very luscious. And that's because the way it was sampled and even the upright piano, um, you know, so it's very it's it's very not dynamic uh, on the sense of the way they did it with like 12 different velocity levels. So the way that this is an unlooped stereo sample is the reason why this piano is so big and grotesque um, in this particular unit uh, is because how they have done the sampling It's 12 levels of velocity switching. So, which is why you can get those little nuances. So, I'm going to go to a, a piano. I'm just going to go to just piano. Okay. I'm going to go to my ensemble button, cut that sound off. And I just want to share with you on, like I said, just how dynamic, dynamic this piano is. Um, inside of the unit, you can actually, um, well, I, I'll go to that. You can change some of the dynamic. On the Kronos, you have... Um, the touchscreen where you can actually raise and lower the lid, uh, but there's dynamic responses on here. Uh, I'm going to turn it up just so you can hear, even with the uh, the piano, the sound of the damper with the mallet coming off of the uh, off of the strings is just phenomenal here. And thank everybody for I thank everybody for coming in. If you're just tuning in, Anthony Williams here core artist and uh, uh, demonstrator here uh, just going over some you know cool features of the grand stage here so let me go back with the to the damper and on, on this piano to show you about some of these nuances here that are that are there so let's see here you have to have the sound up for this I'm pressing the damper and you can actually hear the the, 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 the mallet raising off of the strings. And here is a lower register. Can you hear that? And hopefully you are able to go back and listen to this with headphones. But as soon as I release off of a note, you can hear the actual mallet lifting the upper register.
I mean, this piano is super dynamic. That's the grand stage, okay? That's the grand stage piano. I'll just go through a couple of the piano Italian. That's the Italian, German. German piano and Japanese. That's the Japanese Berlin. Okay, Japanese Berlin, Austrian. Austrian, then back to the Berlin. And I'm going to show you another thing, going back to the, the, the Italian piano or the Grand Stage piano, the dynamic pr uh, process. While I'm playing, I'm going to actually hit the, uh, let me see, I hear, I see, I see a question. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Can you play, please play a little without the pedal pressed. So um, it's, it's kind of the feeling back in between and forth wherever the sustain goes, but I was playing it without, you know, it's a little bit of the nuances inside of there. Now, actually, actually let, me, let me express this too as well. Now, uh, before I go back and show this other feature, there is a, there's actually a button inside of here. So on the editing section, um, the noise elements, let me turn that verb down. So right now, I'm not playing uh, the, the, the pedal right now. I'm just using the on the keys, right? So you can hear the hammer coming off, right? The hammer's going up and down. Now I'm going to turn, you can actually turn those noise elements off. So if you want to edit to that extent as well, you can do that inside of that. So for me, it's just a little bit more dynamic. And they're not always like just right in your face, but they're some of the pieces that kind of make this these pianos very, very expressive. Okay. So, yeah, so you can go in there and turn, turn the noise elements on or off. So, uh, and I'm going to turn them back on. See, uh, Gido, I believe, hopefully I'm pronouncing your name right. So hopefully that kind of gave you a little demonstration. I see your, your comments. So thank you so much. Guys, chime in. If you have any questions, please feel free. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll interact with you as much as I can. Um, noise elements on. Noise elements off. So this, this, this keyboard can be uh, as expressive if, as you want to. Uh, you know, so if, if, if something kind of sparks your mind on how this plays, um, like I said, everything is right here, even down to the EQ. So I've been playing right now this piano without any uh, EQ at all, just from the unit. 
Um, so, and, and before I go into the EQ as well, um, also here is on the back of it. So let me talk about the back of this unit as well, since I, I talked about EQ and how pure this piano sounds. Um, on the back, you have uh, just a dual quarter inch balance left and right out. Then you have a balance XLR out. So you don't even have to worry about um, going into a DI. This unit is super clean. I've done it, I've tried it both ways. Um, so that does have the XLR out and you also have your pedal, switch and damper uh, right there. So I'll explain what some of the, uh, as far as the pedal is concerned a little bit later. Then you have your MIDI in and out as well. I think I saw uh, a question earlier. Uh, is so I guess Pete asked about the MIDI. About the MIDI. So um, yes, it has uh, MIDI in and out, and it also has USB over MIDI. So if you're going to use, if you're looking for a keyboard that that has uh, the the capabilities to be able to go into, uh, you know, Ableton or Pro Tools main stage. Uh, is now hopefully it's not to use the sounds and trigger those sounds because this is all you need for the sounds there, but I get it. Uh, you know, in the studio environment, you also want to be able to trigger other things as well. So just cracking a little joke there. <laughs> but uh, yes, um, that does have USB over MIDI. Uh, you, so you have an A and a B port. There is an A and a B port for that. Uh, and then, like I said, your standard uh, U, uh, US, uh, I mean, your standard five pin MIDI in and MIDI out. Okay, so going back to the uh, the EQ. Right now, this unit does not have any. Uh, I'm I'm not playing. I haven't been playing it at all with any of the dynamics and any of the equalizer. So if you remember from earlier, I told you about the left hand side and basically what's on there as far as the dynamic responses. And so I'm going to go to the dynamic play that button. Dynamics. I just hit that button, right? Take it off. Hit it on. Now. So that's dynamics now EQ. That, that's playing with the low, playing with the mid. Playing with the highs. So this unit can, you know, really be as, you know, ex expresses if <laughs> expresses if expressive <laughs> as you want it to be there uh, with that EQ. So kind of build a little, I'll put a little bit more highs. So, take the EQ off. EQ. Take the EQ and the dynamics off. So you, you see that, um, how it kind of has that uh, different dynamic shift in there, okay? From there. So is there any questions at the moment? Okay. Just kind of check through there. Just making sure to see if you guys have any questions or anything. Okay, so, uh, and we see, uh, let's let's see here. Uh, oh, I wanted to, as well, the, the so just going through some, even to show you how easy it is to kind of change the dynamic response of the reverb. I'm just going to go to the German. Just 
does the dynamic save with the favorite? Okay, so I see that. So uh, I see that question. So let me just go here and write this. I it, it, it writes with the patch. So uh, let me go and turn this on. I'm going to hit write. I'm going to write this sound. Press write. So it looks so far is that the unit, um, so what I'm doing, I'm going to get you a definitive answer right now because I'm trying to do this in real time. So I see the question, does the EQ save with the preset? Uh, and then does the dynamic save with a favorite? Very, very good questions. Very good questions. So as I'm doing that, right. and just making sure that I have that definitively answered for you. So the way it's looking, so I wrote the patch. I wrote the patch and so far the way it's looking, so the answer, uh, to answer the question about the EQ and the dynamics um, it looks like only thing that has been able to save was if there's an S1 and S2 button, which can be programmed to, to either trigger like a tremolo or, you know, some other effect scenario. Um, and so the dynamics and EQ does not save. It did not save with that preset that I was just playing. So I know the S, uh, S1 and S2 saves uh, on that. So... And the, the thing about it, as far as it's saving, I haven't, I, in my experience with the EQ, uh, like right now I'm using uh, my custom in-ear monitors. Um, I'm using IEMs and even with uh, a wedge, I mean, I use both. Sometimes I use, uh, depends on the venue, I use wedges or use ears depending on what we're doing. But um, this is so easy that as if you had to add it, it's not a big detriment to it not saving with the preset because um, it actually is, I mean, it's typically, it's right there to push of a button just as you are using, you know, going to the volume. Now, one thing that I will say for me, which really helps me is um, in the, um, over in the pedal. So you have pedal switch and damper. Um, for me, I'm actually using um, as well an expression pedal. So this hand is playing, this hand is not, not doing anything. So I'm going to explain to you a little bit later too as well about the way the expression pedal is, is very key as well. But yeah, it's at the push of a button. So you don't necessarily have to worry about it setting. That is a great idea. I mean, you know, um, the Kronos, like I said, gets a little bit more in depth with it. But the stage piano is a lot more free thinking, so to speak. I mean, your favorites, you want to write those because we all have sounds that we typically want to get to. You know, so absolutely. So for sure. Okay. Thank you guys so much for joining Anthony Williams here, Core Gardis, uh, you know, and uh, and we're just hanging out, just kind of give you guys some overview of the uh, grand stage here. We're going to move it along along a little bit more here. Um, so we kind of talked about uh, the stage the stage pianos uh, there as well. Um, putting some of these back together. So the next thing is let's talk about the the stage piano as far as the uh, uh, old school. Um, suitcase roads, things of the nature is concerned. So this has the EP1. So these are six EPs that are found in there, the EP1. So this, this electric piano has about six vintage piano sounds from the classic uh, Mark I, Mark II, Mark V. And this is done uh, in some of the DMP uh, time piano model, models, uh, your Whirly 200 and 200A. And this is, uh, these are done by the MDS, which is multi-dimensional synthesis. This is how you're a they're able to get through uh, and, and get these very authentic sounds inside of the um, inside of this unit here. So between the velocity sw switching and how the response is, uh, just from some of the different dynamic changes of what you're going to get from playing a 200A or something like that. So um, so these are like very authentic cabinet models that are. Um, 
that are done, your speaker emulation and effects from like your, uh, your delays and uh, your, your, your choruses and the sounds that we really like to pair, you know, you don't have to put the pedals, you know, some keyboards, you know, some artists like to take and, and, and play their, um, you know, keyboards through a pedal board. That's not really necessary in this unit because our sounds that we're used to using are in here. So you, the um, let's let's just kind of look at some of the. Let me go to the e pianos. Tremolo. So um, you have your tremolo that's working. I think this is in mono right now. So um, and most phones are that way, so you can't really hear it. So I'll just keep it without the trim. Take some out. Taking the uh, the the reverb out. So let me go over to another, like a delay, tap, tap tempo. So you can see as I'm kind of playing through, let me go to the top. Take the depth down. So you can see, just with the depth wheel, cross. Tape delay, mod delay. Time, time mark two cabinet. Time mark cabinet, there's time mark five. Time down the course. Okay, this is a really cool tying dyno sound here. Tying dyno, tie mark, tie mark tremolo. Tremolo, time mark two, time mark phase. So probably one of my favorite um, Steely Dan type, you know, sounds, uh, and and that's all you can, you know, change the level there. Let me see. Uh, So you got that really cool <laughs> dig. You can kind of really dig into this unit here. Um, let's see, going into the uh, Mark II phaser. Mark V. Woo! Time Mark.
So now just going right to the ensemble, adding. You can see how easy it is just on the fly to just kind of play around with this unit. Um, rotary, wah, you know. Wah there. Pedal wah. I'll get into that later. I'll save that for another patch. Uh, whirlies. You can hear that grit when you're digging down on those. Read 200. Two hundred tremolo. Can you adjust the speed of the whirly? Great question. So let me go to the whirly. So let me go into the edit tremolo depth. So that's changing the depth. Okay. Uh, phaser amp drive. Oh, here's the amp. I can take take the amp up. Amp drive reverb damper. Uh, let me go to the see if there is phaser speed tremolo depth. So that's about what I have is the depth. Let me go to another patch. This is for Richard. Richard, thank you for your question. You guys are ask, asking some great questions here. So, okay, so now I'm on this Reed 200A chorus. And I, it's actually on that particular patch on the Re 200 chorus um, that is actually changing the the, the speed there. Um, thanks for answering the the whirly speed. I was playing the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, you can't help but play some of these things that you hear when these with these types of instruments. So that really speaks to the to the uh, dynamic response on how you know Korg puts together these sounds. It's amazing. Um, so Re 200 comp. So the speed is actually going on on the mod wheel on that one. Uh, phaser, auto wah. Uh, so, you know, those sounds, you know, and let me go back to the, even the piano. So um, I forgot to kind of talk about the upright too. <laughs> you can hear that old school sound <laughs> right here on this, uh, right here with the upright piano. So just showing you the authenticity of these units. Uh, any uh, Indian instrument sounds? This is a, uh, that's a very good question. So uh, while I'm in the middle of this, let me turn off my keyboard uh, sound uh, and hit my ensemble button. So there is a section where we spoke of 
uh, earlier about how um, there is a section on the keyboard on the ensemble side where you can actually go and scroll through uh, many variations of the sounds that are layered. Um, actually, let me do let me do it on the keyboard side on the ensemble. So I'm going to scroll through. Um, so if if you're to be if, to be honest, if you're looking for uh, very specific sounds as far as uh, Indian sounds are concerned. I mean, you do have a, a different, you have 500 under the ensemble sounds. There are 500 sounds uh, to, uh, to, be, to add to. Now, mind you, the origin of this keyboard is, um, this is actually the stage piano. So as far as any Indian instruments, um, I am seeing... Uh, Sitar, Santur, so there, uh, there are a couple of sounds, but if you're looking for more in-depth uh, tones like that, probably would be going into uh, like a Kronos or something, because that's going to have uh, way more expansive tone sets, and this is a keyboard that is a uh, derivative of the Kronos. That it's going to give you the uh, the access to your main sounds that you're going to use, like your pianos, uh, Rhodes, clavs. Uh, so some of those staple sounds that you're going to find, and your strings, pads, uh, without having all the other bells and whistles. So hopefully, I was able to answer that question for you. Um, that asked about the, uh, the Indian instrument sounds. So uh, let's see. And thank you all for sticking in with me here. Um, then there's uh, next you have your CX3. Um, so uh, Korg a while back did actually make um, a, a digital organ. And uh, so uh, that came in, I believe, a, a single uh, tier and a two tier as well. Um, let's see, here's another question. How would you describe the keyboard action compared with other pianos that I've played? Great question, Ma Malcolm. And then I'll go and, and, and talk about the organs. Uh, for me, um, this is just a little bit of honesty here, and my family knows it. Uh, my Korg family knows it. Uh, for a while, um, I didn't use Korg uh, for pianos um, just because for me at the time, they weren't just at the depth of, I mean, Korg is at the core of everything that I've used as far as all, all of my synth, my orchestration. Uh, you know, I, I've been a Korg user ever since the Trinity. You know, in my writer, I would have the Trinity, uh, you know, then the Triton, uh, the, 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 I'm actually, even the Chrome, I have the Chrome behind me here on this side. I use the Chrome as well just to show people that a, a unit like that, you know, uh, just because it's a little less expensive is not, you know, does not serve a purpose, and it does. Um, you know, and then you go into the M3, probably about when I start noticing Korg really, really um, coming up on the, as far as the piano is concerned. Um, and it, now the tones with the Triton uh, Extreme, uh, the blue Triton Extreme. I had a friend of mine uh, here in, in, in Cincinnati and, and a mentor of mine who I, I adore, um, who um, started, I mean, he, 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 he could take that keyboard and make it sound like, <laughs> a, a amazing piano. I'm I'm one of those guys that dives into the menus and 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 looks under the hood. And he was able to kind of get the expression of the hammer action and kind of changing that stuff. I'm like, okay, wow. And then with the tube that was incorporated in there, I'm like, yo, this is like really they're they're on to something. So with that Triton Extreme and the Triton Extreme 88, it's kind of like okay, I think they were on the precipice of something. They were almost there. And then when the when the Chronos came out, I'm like, yo. You guys, I, I told you that it was on the way. Uh, on the television show that I played for, um, a, a lot of my friends in the industry um, would, would come, and it's like, you know, we, they had to play the gear that was there. So, you know, between, you know, uh, motifs and all that type of stuff, you know, of course there's other brands, but uh, and at the moment, Korg didn't really shine in that. And then when the Kronos came out, it changed the game, it ch and, and, and much applause. So I played them all. I played, you know, uh, the 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 Nords. I played the Yamahas, and, and shout out to all those companies that do amazing things. You know, that, because everybody helps to take and push it to the next level with it with inspiration. But uh, for me, um, there is as far as the comparison. Now we like what we like. Um, you know, the, the, the cars that we drive, everybody has that, that I uh, um, told somebody before, everybody has that seat that they like 
uh, uh, that they sit in um, a, 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 at their house when it's movie night. You know, uh, my kids, they, they fight over a particular you know, position on the couch because they know uh, what's going to, you know, they, they have their favorite spot. Growing up, you know, my dad, he had his spot on the couch. I already know it was going to be in the sub by the, on the, where the sub was in the, in the, in the corner. And, and he eventually be asleep. Love you, Dad. <laughs> he eventually be asleep. I don't know how that sub didn't wake him up. But <laughs> anyway, everybody has their favorite seat, okay? Everybody has something that they favor. And as far as, you know, not to knock other brands, and, and that's not this is what this is about. But um, for me, uh, this is how I'm inspired. And one thing that's really cool for me is that Korg has the congruency and consistency across their brands. So if you are playing a Kronos or if you have a, 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 a D1 or a C1 Air or any of those digital stage pianos, um, those are going to be, um, you know, have the same key bed. This is the RH3 Japanese award winning key bed that has won award after award year after year at the NAMM show and other trade show, shows across the, uh, across the world. So for me, um, I, my, my uh, Kronos 88 is behind me over here. Um, and then my, um, you know, I have a couple of other weighted cords, but as far as the playability of this, um, it definitely for sure is right up there. Um, and I love the fact that they all have the same key bed. So hopefully that answers your question on my perspective of, you know, how this compares. I mean, everything has their touch. You know, I've, I've played other boards from other manufacturers, and I've liked their touch. But like I said, for me, with the RH3 key bed, this is the most buttery uh, and, and the most. Now, I didn't grow up. Uh, I know more uh, classically trained acoustic pianists will be probably more crit uh, critical of this. Uh, but for me, um, the, the action of this, it's smooth. I mean, you have on the bottom end, you have the heavier um, keys, and it gets lighter up to the top like an acoustic piano. Here's another question. Can we uh, do sequencing on grand stage, or is it designed for stage shows? So uh, you can't do sequencing on this. This is just a stage piano. Sequencing is done in the Kronos. This is like taking some of the, 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 the heart of the Kronos out and making it uh, accessible as far as a stage piano. Everybody's going to have their flagship, and this is the flagship stage piano for Korg. Um, so no, you can't sequence, but if you, as, as far as uh, incorporating that, if you were wanting to do something like that, um, as far as sequencing, this does have USB over MIDI, okay? And it has MIDI. So uh, if you're wanting to do some tracking and recording as far as a computer's concerned, you have full integration with that to be able to do that. Your computer recognizes this. And uh, even with the Kronos, the Kronos pops up. I'm, I'm a Pro Tools user. The Kronos pops up and it has, uh, you know, you can see it inside of Pro Tools. So, uh, so yeah, so you can actually take this and, uh, you know, a tip and trick for recording is just not doing it as far as one pass. Because uh, if, if you don't necessarily like the pass or the sound that you did and want to do something else or use a different piano, once you have sequenced the MIDI data inside of whatever DAW that you're using, whether you're just wanting to trigger a sound that's inside of your DAW, your digital audio workstation, i.e. Pro Tools, uh, uh, Reason, uh, um, um, Logic, uh, Ableton, any of those, you know, it's best to track it with MIDI, which is why this has this MIDI here, okay? So then you can go back, and this MIDI note data is going to transfer and transmit over USB if you're going to use the USB versus the MIDI in and out. So that's going to translate over that, and it's going to save that data. So then you can go back if you want to change it from, you know, uh, the, the Italian grand to the, the state single grand stage grand, you can do that as well. So uh, that's a great question. So hopefully I was able to answer uh, that question for you. And uh, yeah, so as far as that's concerned, as far as the sequencing. So yes, so cool. I see cool. Thank you. No worries at all. If you have any questions at all, anytime, please feel free to ask them. So yeah, that's, the, that's what I do as a player. Because sometimes you do a pass and it could be the perfect take. And you're like, oh man, I, 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 I didn't really like that sound. That the, the, This track is growing and it's taking on another texture. And it took me years before, you know, I, I got smart and said, hey, let me record that MIDI data every time. So, yeah, absolutely. So g moving on to the CX-3, got the CX-3 organs here. So um, and behind me as well is the Vox Continental. Uh, and, you know, you're getting some of that inside of here as well. So you got three different sound engines as far as the CX-3 concerned with the CX-3, the Vox and the compact sound. So uh, let's go to the let's go to the organ here. Thank you. 
Okay, so going back to this unit on the left-hand side, how you can get the dynamic responses with this unit is through the SW1 and SW2. So right now this organ Nothing's happening. Typically, you might want to go to the mod wheel, but on this organ, SW1, a little, uh, a little percussion. So that's SW1. SW2 is my rotary. A single drop or organ, wet ballot. SW2, wet ballot, organ, smooth jazz. Okay. Okay, so let's move it on a little bit here. Let's move it on a little bit. So just to go a little bit more, uh, and hopefully we can do a part two on this. So, um, so that's the organ sounds. You have the SST. This is another cool thing about this SST. Um, it's going to have your smooth sound transition. So the same thing that you find as far as the um, Korg, is, is, as far as the Kronos is concerned, that when you play one sound and go to the next sound, you won't lose the, uh, the, the playability of it. So here's SST. You see it didn't click over. I just simply clicked from one sound to the next. So smooth sound transition. Uh, we talked about the RH3 keyboard. We talked about the, the design here. Uh, also, some of the accessories. There's a cool stand that comes with it. Um, so, yeah, this is the grand stage. Um, 88 key, um, 73 key. I'll just give you a quick overview before we end here. Seventy-three key on the Kronos seventy-three is going to be uh, thirty-seven pounds. Eighty-eight key is forty-four pounds, uh, and then uh, you have all these sound engines that are there between SGX, EP1, S, uh, CX3, uh, the Vox, the Compact L1, and HD1. There's over five hundred sounds that's on the ensemble setting. Um, you have your dual quarter inch, your dual XLR there, and you also have pedal switch and damper. Uh, one thing that I really like about this uh, is going into uh, even, uh, like I use an expression pedal. So here is uh, a clav with the pedal wah. So that's cool. I always have the expression pedal for the volume or for using like the pedal wah. But, yep, that's it. This is, I'm going to wrap it up here, and, uh, you know, we could really spend all night with this. I just wanted to kind of give you guys a quick overview of this unit and how it's kind of changed, you know, my perception uh, and, and my playability and not feeling like I was stifled because I didn't have my Kronos. And, you know, so this is, this is very intuitive on this user interface. Very, um, th this, is, this is like super, uh, uh, super, super simple from your just having the, the, the main buttons that you need to get the gig done. But yeah, this is Anthony Williams, Core Guard is here, hanging out with the Grand Stage. Hopefully we can do a part two of this and get a little bit more in depth. But yeah, Core Grand Stage, thank you so much to Korg uh, for this. And look, there's gonna be an amazing live tonight on Instagram with Adam Blackstone, uh, somebody that you know I have been inspired by this generation and uh, one of the most phenomenal talents here uh, gifts to us as far as this generation is concerned for music directors and, and really influencers in the game. So yeah, tune in tonight on Instagram Live and check out Adam Blackstone and uh, so much love to Korg here. Anthony Williams here, uh, Korg Grand Stage. Thank you so much. Much love to y'all. Be safe. Much love.